You've written a book about coronavirus, which goes right to the heart then of faith. And the question mark that many people still have, the one that's been around for a long time, is of course this one of suffering. How can a good God allow a terrible thing like this to happen? You unpack it in your book. What is it that you'd most like us to take out of it? Well, this is one of those big questions with whom many of us who've thought about these things, and that's most of us have wrestled all our lives. And what I noticed during life about that discussion, uh, it goes back to uh, Lucretius, really, and Epicurus and David Hume, who are always cited in this, that uh, God's goodness is incompatible with his power because look at the evil in the universe. But since we do not seem to be able to solve that, I ask a different question, and that's because I'm a mathematician. If we bash our heads on one question for centuries, we often say, are we asking the right question? I wonder if we are here. The fact is that we are confronted as we look at the world with a mixed picture. We see beauty like the stars, the night out in your farm in Australia, and we see ugliness. We see pandemics. We see barbed wire bombs and terrorism. And the world presents us with that mixed picture. And we've got to face it, and no worldview worthy of its salt that doesn't uh, is worthy of its salt if it doesn't face that. So I ask the question, is there anywhere any evidence that there exists a God of such a kind that we can trust with that? Now, that's a very hard question. But it seems to me that Christianity explores this not only rationally, but opens a window on a possibility, doesn't give us a simplistic solution. And I wouldn't insult anybody's intelligence by suggesting that. But in my book, I point out that at the heart of Christianity, there is suffering. And if Jesus is, as he claimed to be, God incarnate, then we can legitimately ask, what is God doing on a cross? And it surely shows, at the very least, that God has not remained distant from human suffering, but has become part of it. Mm. But if that were all, we'd never have heard of Jesus. And the second half of the story is the one where Lewis has helped me such a great deal. And that is the resurrection, that God raised Jesus from the dead. And therefore, death is not the end. And that throws a totally different light on suffering. You see, I understand people because I know many of them who look at this problem and Hume's formulation of it and say, well, therefore, it's obvious. The answer is there's no God. And at one level, they appear to have resolved the intellectual problem, but they have not resolved the suffering and the pain. They haven't removed it. It's still there. But what they've clearly removed, and many of them will admit it, is all ultimate hope. Now, that yeah. may be the situation, but it seems to me we need to explore further a credible alternative that goes deeply into that problem and offers us real hope through the resurrection of Jesus. Atheism has nothing to say something of COVID-19. Christianity won't necessarily mean that they're cured of it, but it has something to say. It can tell them that through a simple step of commitment to Christ and repenting of the mess they've made of their lives and perhaps their, uh, those of others, they can enter into a new kind of life which transcends COVID. Now, I think that if that's true, that is worth communicating. And that is part of what my book is about. Now, I know this is a very inadequate presentation, but if your watchers and listeners want to hear more, I arrived in New Zealand two days after the earthquake at Christchurch, and someone has put together a web page about what I said to the people of New Zealand when they had to meet uh, folks who had lost relatives uh, in that earthquake, which is what we call natural evil, just as COVID-19 is. And if they Google my name in New Zealand, they will perhaps find something that will help them to see a bit more detail in it. And then, of course, there is my little book. Well, thank you for being very modest. I think what you've just said is very helpful. 
The alternative to say that it's just an accident, everything's an accident, it's just in our DNA, is somehow very empty and quite devastating if you think it's stopping through. There's no rhyme, there's no reason, there's no explanation. The wounds will never be bound up, the pain will never end, there is no hope. I don't know that we can really survive without hope. It's not easy, but one offers a difficult road to hope, the other it seems to me to suggest that there is no such thing as hope, it's an irrelevant human longing anyway. So why suffering? Does anyone understand? Will there ever be any relief? Will the wounds be bound up? If it's all meaningless, then no one understands. There'll be no healing. There's no hope. It won't end. What a despairing place that seems to me. And I wonder whether it hasn't, this lack of hope now, permeated our culture in a really serious way. We, we see unhappiness, uh, anxiety, depression, self-harm, uh, very deeply enmeshed now in Western culture. We need, despite our material well-being, we need more. I'm sure you're absolutely right. And that's why programs like this are very important, because unfortunately, in my country at least, the media are very biased against serious discussion of what Christianity has to say. And it's very interesting. In the UK, in recent days, Church attendance in virtual services has gone up. It's multiplied by five to ten times. And it shows that people want to investigate whether the God solution has anything to say in the midst of the pandemic. But you're absolutely right. And my heart goes out to young people who have been fed a superficial materialism and have no not even the beginning of an understanding of what Christianity has to say. So it's important, and that's one of the reasons I stepped into the public arena, to call out some of these very inadequate understandings of culture and of history and of Christianity. Thank you for watching this episode. We appreciate your support. If you value vital conversations like this one, be sure to subscribe to the channel there and also click the notification bell to stay up to date with new releases.